We have all spent the past year watching SpaceX accomplish some of the most incredible feats of engineering that the world has ever known. We've got absolutely colossal Starship rockets flying to space and then coming back down again. We have this massive network of high-speed internet satellites, multiple crews of people flown to the ISS and even far beyond. Not to mention a probe sent on its way to Jupiter. Now, what if I told you that 2025 will be even crazier? Let's begin with Starship. This truly is the future of SpaceX, a rocket that is still very much in development, yet has already performed some of the most mind-blowing feats of science and engineering. In 2023, we saw Starship take flight and explode. In 2024, not only did we see the rocket fly without blowing up, we saw it land successfully in the most amazing way. The Super Heavy booster was caught by a pair of robotic chopstick arms attached to the Mechazilla Tower. And then the ship stage made a flawless, controlled water landing over the Indian Ocean. Now for 2025, we bring those two feats together. The first orbital return and tower catch of the upper stage ship. That's the pointy bit with the wings. So, probably not on the next flight, but almost certainly on the flight after that, SpaceX will push their Starship higher and faster than ever before. In order to return to the launch site, this ship has to complete a full orbit around the Earth. What we've seen so far has been more like two-thirds of an orbit, with the ship touching down just west of Australia. So this means that when the ship does finally return through the atmosphere, it will be generating even more heat and red-hot plasma. Then Starship will fly over Mexico as it gradually coasts down lower and lower until it's directly over top of Starbase Texas. From here, the engines will relight, the rocket will flip down, and then it will descend gracefully into the waiting arms of the Mechazilla. That's the idea, at least. It's not like SpaceX has never failed on the first attempt before. Success is far from certain, but excitement is guaranteed. To help them accomplish this insane feat, SpaceX has a new and improved version of Starship that will begin flying in 2025. The Starship Block 2, or V2, whatever you want to call it, just know that this new Starship is a bit longer, which is a change that's been made to stretch out the fuel tanks and allow this ship to carry more weight to higher altitudes than ever before. The previous Starship, V1, never really carried much of anything with it to space, aside from a banana. So another thing that we are looking for in 2025 will be the first payload deployed by a Starship. That's very likely to be the new SpaceX Starlink satellite. This is going to be a bigger, heavier, and more capable version of the satellite than what has been deployed by Falcon 9 for all of these years. The new and improved Starlink will allow for faster connection speeds over wider areas, and it's also going to provide a lot more of the direct-to-cell connection, meaning that in many places you won't even need a satellite dish to get Starlink internet. It'll just come straight to your phone. And to further help Starship on its new mission, SpaceX will be rolling out the latest version of their Raptor engine in 2025. This is Raptor V3. It's not massively different from V2 in terms of performance, just a little more power, but the appearance is very different. Raptor 3 is the most streamlined rocket engine we've ever seen. There is almost no visible plumbing or wiring, everything is integrated into the engine body. This is going to make a big difference when it comes to the reliability and robustness of the rocket engine. When we look at a typical rocket engine like a Merlin or even an older Raptor V1, all of those hoses and wires are potential points of failure that can crack and break, they can come loose, they can burn up and melt. So many things can go wrong and have gone wrong. Starship has had a lot of engines fail mid-flight over the past two years for a wide variety of reasons. This should end in 2025. Now, if that wasn't enough, there's another giant milestone coming for SpaceX and Starship in 2025. That's orbital refilling. It's important to know that because the Starship is so gigantic, it can only achieve a relatively low orbit on one tank of gas. So in order to go anywhere above the Earth, like the Moon or Mars, it needs to fuel up in space. 
So, to accomplish the orbital refilling, SpaceX needs to dock two starships together as they fly around the Earth at over 20,000 kilometers per hour. Sounds hard, and it is, but to be fair, we dock spaceships to the ISS all the time, so this isn't a totally new idea, but it also is at the same time. We've never done a cryogenic fuel transfer in orbit before. Starship uses liquid methane and oxygen as a propellant, mostly oxygen, and in order to liquefy these elements that we typically see in their gas state, you have to keep them very, very cold. Now, in spite of what you may have heard, it's not always cold in space. Just like on Earth, if the sun is shining on you, it's going to be warm. So there is a problem to overcome with making sure that the liquid propellants don't get boiled away by heat from the sun. If the propellants get too hot and start to boil off inside the starship's tank, then the gas needs to be vented out, or else the rocket will explode, like when your pot of water boils over on the stove. So this makes the orbital refilling maneuver a two-stage problem. One, you need to get the two giant spaceships to very gently connect together without crashing into each other. Then you need to move this incredibly cold and volatile liquid between the two. And this demonstration needs to happen in 2025 because NASA is requiring SpaceX to prove that it can be done in order to proceed with the Artemis 3 lunar lander, which will not be happening in 2025 or 2026, but NASA is still gunning for 2027. Either way, SpaceX will have plenty of opportunity to practice, as the FAA is likely to approve Starbase Texas for up to 25 launches and landings of the Starship and Super Heavy booster in 2025. So we could be looking at one launch every two weeks. I don't think we'll see that happen in the first half of the year because the SpaceX Star Factory doesn't appear to be making new ships and boosters at a fast enough pace, and we're probably not likely to see any flight hardware getting fully reused anytime in the near future. It could still happen in 2025, but for the first quarter, we're likely to keep seeing about one launch a month. Anyway, we are also going to be keeping an eye on some new development at the SpaceX Starbase launch site in 2025. The ground crew is currently fast at work building a second launch tower for Starship. This is going to be very important for a few reasons. One, it allows them to launch a pair of starships in one day, which is going to be critical for that orbital docking that we just talked about. Two, it gives SpaceX a little bit of redundancy, just in case there was to be some kind of a mishap during a launch or landing operation. If there's only one tower and it blows up, then Starship is out of commission for a long time, and that would have a considerable impact on the speed of development. But if there are two launch towers, then SpaceX has some wiggle room. Third, the second launch tower will be critical for getting the entire Starship rocket stack upgraded to Block 2 configuration. We talked about the new ship stage, but SpaceX also wants to upgrade the Super Heavy booster to a taller, more powerful, and more efficient design. And when you stack those two bigger vehicles on top of each other, then you get something that is too tall for the original launch tower to handle. So, tower number two is going to be necessary at some point in the future, potentially as early as next year. And then there is Cape Canaveral. This is where SpaceX is building a second set of launch infrastructure for Starship. It will also have two towers, and this is the location where we'll see Starship used for payloads other than Starlink and other internal SpaceX missions. So that would be NASA, Space Force, and other commercial aerospace companies. There is a lot of interest in using Starship as a launch vehicle for a number of projects. Obviously, NASA wants a few of these to land people on the moon for their Artemis program, but Starship has also been selected by Astrolab to launch their Flex rover to the moon, along with Lunar Outpost, who also wants Starship to deploy their Eagle rover on the moon, followed by the Japanese Space Agency, who wants Starship to carry their pressurized lunar cruiser to the surface. Now, of course, we shouldn't count out the Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy launch system just yet. SpaceX President Gwynne Shotwell has said that the Falcon series will eventually be replaced with Starship six or eight years from now. But in the meantime, for 2025, these tried and true rockets will be carrying some very cool payloads. Beginning early in January 2025, the intuitive machine's Nova Sea Lander will be heading to the moon on a Falcon 9 followed by the Japanese company iSpace and their Hakuto-R lunar lander, also in January 2025 flying on a Falcon 9. 
And as if that weren't enough, there's also the Firefly Blue Ghost Lunar Lander, also booked on a Falcon 9 in January. Of course, it is important to remember that in the spaceflight world, timelines are always flexible and they change often. In March of 2025, there is a really interesting crewed flight booked on the Falcon 9 and Dragon capsule. This is named Fram 2. It's a private flight purchased by Chinese crypto millionaire Chun Wang. He's going to take an all-civilian crew into a polar orbit around the Earth, meaning instead of circling around the equator, they are going over the North and South Poles. No one has ever done that before, so it should be very cool. Then in August 2025, the Falcon 9 is set to launch a new space station, the Haven 1. It's a small single module habitat made by an American company called Fast. Then if the station is successful, a Crew Dragon vehicle will be launched in September 2025 to take the first people aboard the Haven 1. And if you thought that we were done with missions to the moon in 2025, we are not. In October, the Falcon 9 will be carrying yet another Intuitive Machines lunar lander. This is also using their Nova Sea landing platform, assuming that Intuitive Machines can actually get it to work on the second attempt in January. This is the very tall and skinny one that tipped over and crash landed in February 2024, so we'll see how this goes. Unfortunately, we don't have much action for the Falcon Heavy coming up in 2025. The biggest mission profile is set to be in November, when the rocket will send Astrobotics Griffin Lander to the surface of the moon. This mission was supposed to include NASA's Viper Lunar Rover, which is a water-sniffing robot that was going to help pinpoint future landing sites for the Artemis missions, but the Viper project was discontinued this year, so it looks like the launch will still be going forward. However, the payload will be mostly empty. NASA has said that they'll replace Viper with a mass simulator to test the Griffin lander, which is typically just a cement block, so that's kind of disappointing. And then there should be two other Falcon Heavy launches in 2025. Those are classified Space Force missions, which has been the primary use for the Falcon Heavy system the past few years, so we won't know exactly what the rocket is putting into space, but it's still a lot of fun to watch, so stay tuned for all that and more. Happy New Year.